morning. We're going to get started now. There's a few people still coming in, but we'll get started now. So I want to welcome everyone to our area of focus webinar on information systems at the DeGroote School of Business. I'm Victoria, and I'm the recruiter for the DeGroote School of Business. So some of you may already be current students and you know me. Some of you might be applicants and you're getting constant emails from me that you can hopefully put a, a face to the name. Um, so before we get started and before I hand this over to our faculty, I just want to discuss what an area of focus is. So some of our current students, hopefully you already know what an area of focus is. Some of our applicants might not know what it is yet. So at the Degree School of Business, in your first two years, you take courses from all areas, and that gives you the chance to try a little bit of everything, and you can see if there's one area that you're more interested in. And then in your third and fourth year, you're able to choose an area of focus, and you can focus on that. It doesn't show on your degree, but it will be something that you can then put on a resume, and you can use to market yourself to employers. So today's, uh, today's area of focus is information systems. So you have the chance to ask our faculty and students any questions you have about the area of focus and info systems. And we're joined by two of our faculty members and two students. So feel free to ask anything you want. So at the bottom of the webinar, you can see the Q&A or the chat. Feel free to put any questions into the Q&A or the chat. And we're going to get to those at the end. So for now, I'm going to pass it over to Brian Detler. Thank you, Victoria. Let's see if I can get these slides going. Yeah, so this is me. I, I'm Professor Detler. Uh, I've been at McMaster since uh, 2000, so I've been there 21 years, and it's been a great experience, and, that, uh, and our area has been growing uh, extensively since I joined, and so it's very exciting today to talk to uh, people who are potentially interested in this field. Uh, I think it's a very wonderful field uh, to join, and there's lots of job op opportunities, and um, society is going more and more technical and information technology is more and more important. So I think this is a great area of focus to specialize in. So as I said, I'm a professor, currently the area chair uh, for information systems, been the area chair for the last six years. I also serve as the president of the Association of Information Science and Technology. This is a, a large uh, international, um, predominantly academic society um, dedicated to the field of information. Um, it has about 1,500 uh, members currently worldwide. And I'm, I also have a, a visiting professor appointment in uh, Edinburgh Napier University in Scotland. So it's always a treat to go over there and do some research with colleagues. Um, and that's basically who I am and what I am. I'll pass it over to Mariam, our other speaker. Yeah, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Maria Mbosamagai and I am an assistant professor in information systems. Uh, so I actually um, joined as a faculty member uh, like at DeGroote since 2016. I actually got my PhD at DeGroote in information systems and then since 2016 uh, I became as an assistant professor. So in terms of my background, I did my bachelor degree in industrial management and then uh, my uh, the master degree in marketing and then I became more interested in information systems and I'm really happy that I actually selected this area because this is an amazing area that uh, like um, when you are going to go to your uh, to your next years uh, of uh, doing your undergrad you're going to understand that uh, wow well, this is an amazing area so there are a lot of uh, like job opportunities uh, related to this area because of all the advanced technologies, big data, data analytics, you may have heard about all these uh, new and hot topic terms. Uh, so this is why I have selected my PhD uh, like in this area and I'm really happy that um, I did my PhD in this area and uh, right now I am an assistant professor in this area. So I'm really happy to be with you today and please I uh, just uh, feel free to ask uh, if you have any question about this area. Now I'm gonna pass it to Brad, uh, Dr. Destro yeah. to just continue. Yeah, Dr. Gazamurai is being very bashful or humble. Uh, she's been promoted recently to associate professor starting July 1st, and she's also going to be our new area chair as I step down and take an mid leave next year. So um, we're changing reins here, the, the whole organization and leadership, but it's great to have her on board in our area. Thank you, thank you, Brian. So just generally about the information systems area, um, it's basically concerned with the management uh, use and impact of information technologies and organizations, that's our focus. So we as an area concentrate more on the managerial and strategic aspects of IT and not so much the technical aspects, though some of our courses do have technical components. Um, so if you're interested in the business use of technology and how organizations can use or leverage technology for, for strategic advantage and, and success. This is the area that you want, want to be in. 
So our courses are very broad. Um, as I mentioned, they pertain mainly to strategic use, business intelligence, uh, business analytics, systems analysis, database design, project management is very, uh, another popular course. So, so that's kind of the, the general, it's kind of a blend between business and technology. So we have a variety of programs at McMaster, not only in the commerce program, um, but also in the MBA. Uh, and we have a master of science in e-health, which we're the administrative home. We also have a very strong and healthy PhD program. Uh, so most of our faculty, if not all, um, publish in top IS academic journals and leading uh, global uh, conferences. Uh, so currently we have six full professors, uh, one assistant, now associate, uh, one professor emeritus and uh, uh, several sessionals and a teaching track professor, but we're also hiring more. Um, because our, our field is actually growing and there's a big demand for the, our courses. So we're, we're actually understaffed right now, um, but it's exciting to see this growth. It's, that's a good problem to have, as, as I keep saying to people. So, Mary, why don't you talk, take on this slide? I'll give you a chance. Yeah, sure, Brian. So, uh, so a lot of you actually, when I'm teaching, uh, like in the second year, like there's a course 2K3. I don't know, if, maybe if you're in your second year, you're familiar with this course, but a lot of the students are asking me, what is the information systems? And then they want to understand more about information systems and the kind of the jobs that they are going to get after they graduate, if they focus on courses that are related more to information systems area. So uh, I want to let you know that actually information systems is a multidisciplinary area that uh, we focus, it's not only uh, focus on the technical aspects because a lot of the commerce students tell me that, oh, we are so scared of information systems because this is very technical, but that is not true actually. So in information systems area, we focus on both managerial aspects and technical aspects, but we, our main focus is on managerial aspects. So we do have a lot of hands-on activities in different courses, if, depending on which courses you are going to take. Uh, like, for example, we have uh, the different courses related to data analytics. We have courses about project managers. So in all the courses that we are going to have that we are going to talk more about them in the next slides, we are going to have different hands-on activities that you're going to get more familiar with different tools. And these different tools are going to enable you actually to find the root really, really good jobs in future. So for example, a lot of the students ask me, okay, what kind of job I can uh, get when I'm graduating if I focus on information systems? So for example, the type of the jobs that you can get is that uh, like if you focus on data analytics, for example, you can become as a business analyst, data scientist, or in, in general, if you are take more courses in information systems, for example, you can become as an IT manager or system developers, or even, for example, you can be, become as a web content manager. So you see there are a lot of opportunities uh, that you can find um, if you focus on uh, information systems area when you, uh, when you go to the job market. And actually, the salary rate of information systems uh, like uh, for, for this area is really, really high compared like, to uh, many, of, uh, many other areas. So for example, if you uh, like, uh, want to learn more about data analysis, and if you want to become as a business analyst, uh, I, am, I know that like uh, around um, uh, right now, a lot of uh, the companies, like around 70% of the companies in Ontario are actually looking for people who have these type of skills. So uh, the good news is that because of all these advanced technologies, uh, like uh, this field, as uh, Dr. Detour was uh, mentioning, it is growing and there are a lot of firms that are actually looking to hire somebody who knows more about information systems area. And, uh, and again, uh, like um, you don't need to have um, uh, Pro core programming skills. So some of the students always ask, me, okay, if you, I want to take information systems courses, do I need to have a, a programming skills uh, or not? And the answer is no, because uh, like information systems is different from computer science. A lot of students confuse these two together. So if you, for example, study uh, computer science in engineering department, that is very technical, but in information systems, it's all about the use of the information system. So for example, if the organizations want to implement new technology in the firm, like for example, 
want to understand that if that new technology is easy to use, if it is usable for the end users, because if it's not, it's going to be really frustrating for everybody, right? But not only in organizations, even in the individual level. So we are focusing on, therefore, on the use of the new technologies. It is much less technical than computer science program. But if for those of you that are also interested in a technical aspect, this is why we have different courses that, again, the next slides we're going to talk about them that focus both on technical aspects and the managerial aspects. So I'm going to pass it to Dr. Detour to continue now. Uh, thank you. Yeah, exactly. That's a, a nice segue, uh, Miriam, to, to showcasing the courses that we offered in the commerce program. So they basically span uh, second year to fourth year. Um, the second year course is very introductory, assuming that you know nothing. And, and I'll let Miriam uh, speak to that one. What, what, what's that course about in, in a nutshell? Yeah, so uh, so the courses, the name of the course is 2K Trees Information Systems in, in Management. And it's uh, everybody takes that, right? So we usually have more than a thousand students in this course. And this course uh, focus on the main concepts in information systems. So for example, in this course, we talk about uh, why, for example, uh, sec uh, the security of the information systems is important. Why big data is important. Important. Why this process management is important? What is SAP? What is ERP? You are going to also have hands on activities for SAP and especially those of you that want to work on that area. Uh, so it's a really, really good chance for you to have some hands on activities on that. And also we have a hands on activity about Microsoft Access that you're going to learn more about databases. So the, the, the course by itself, uh, so we don't expect you to have any uh, like background in information system is all this course is all about the important topics that we are going to cover in information systems and after you finish uh, taking this course you would understand what information systems is and you like you're going to understand all the other topics that you're going to see uh, for the uh, for the courses in the, that you're going to get that you can take in the third year and the fourth year so for example you see where you're going to see the temp database design for 3kd3 or system analysis like management of interpretation Price data analytics, project management, business process management. So uh, maybe right now, when you look at these terms, you may not sure about the, the, the meaning of these things or what you're going to learn in these courses. But when you take 2K3, you are going to generally understand the meaning of each of these things and what you are going to expect uh, to, like, to see uh, when you take the other courses in your third year and in your fourth year. Now I'm going to pass it to Brian to continue yeah. about the other courses. Yeah, thank you. So in third year, again, you can, after taking that general second year course, you can take a, a database design course, which is, a, you know, I think very, very fascinating uh, topic here. I used to be a data analyst and data architect in, in industry. Um, but basically, you learn all about different types of database designs and their use and how to apply them. 3K3 is more of a systems analysis course, so not very technical, but both planning out systems and how data would flow between different functional business processes. Uh, Miriam uh, teaches the uh, 3KE3. Uh, basically, it's an, if I understand Miriam, it's a, an introduction to data analytics. Uh, it is, and uh, in this course, actually, uh, it uh, I focus more on um, well, on the technical and the managerial and the statistical side of uh, data analytics. And uh, actually, uh, the demand for this course has been increased significantly. And the reason is that it, it is a very hot topic: data analytics, big data. These are all a very very hot topic nowadays. And this is why a lot of organ a lot of students want to take this course because they know that after they take this course, they are uh, they can be more more successful when they were, they go to the job market if they are willing to work in the area of data analytics. So in this course, I'm focusing a lot a lot of hands on activities. Uh, so I'm going to teach students what is a data analytics, what type of data analytics tools we have. So and um, like um, in uh, like every around two weeks or a week, we have hands on activities. And I'm going to teach uh, students the the more the popular tools that organizations are using to analyze the data. 
to make sure that they could make their resume much more stronger to add all those skills. For example, I teach them uh, like Tableau, about the JMP, which is from SaaS company. Like we go through Excel together. So we go through Rapid Miner to do web scraping. So it's a lot of fun. I really love teaching this course. It is, it is a really, really fun and full of learning course. So I'm going to pass it to uh, Brian uh, for, to talk a little bit more about project management. Yeah, so we have four courses in the fourth year. Uh, I teach two of them, so I'll speak to those. Uh, project management is very popular. A lot of students find this a basic business skill to have. And in that course, we, we assume no prior knowledge to project management. We start from the beginning, what is a project? But we also teach um, you know, the social side and the technical side. So you get hands-on experience with MS project and uh, you do deliver a, um, a, a project in, in a group setting in there. With uh, 4KH3, it's, that, that's a fun one. Um, it's basically an opportunity for you to think about the strategic use of IT for business. And students work throughout the whole uh, term on developing a business plan for an e-business startup idea. And, and that's quite exciting. Uh, but that's more of a, uh, a strategic focus as opposed to a technical course. And then we have the other two, uh, another data mining and business intelligence course, 4K G3, and then business process management, which is 4K I3, which has an SAP component, which we'll get to in a, in a few minutes. So that's just a quick overview of our courses. So uh, Brian, uh, just yeah. there's a question uh, that somebody asked, uh, are there any prerequisites for a 4K F3 project management? Um, no, you can, after second year, you can go in. Great. Yeah, I think if they take 2K3, they, are, they can just take it, right? Yeah, I think it's set up for anyone can take it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, check with... Check the calendar. Change, these prereqs change every year, so I get confused what it really is. So I just say I think this is what it is, but don't quote me. Um, so the certificate, yeah, this is something we started a few years ago um, uh, because we recognize that there's a, a great need for students to want to get some sort of, um, you know, qualification. Uh, a certification in this area. So right now you can do an area of focus, but you take all these courses, but you, there's nothing that really says something on your transcript. So we have a certificate program that's been very popular. Um, and we work in conjunction with the uh, software technology group uh, across campus in the Faculty of Engineering to offer some of the more technical courses. Um, but the idea here is that we've actually had this certificate aligned with the BTM or business technology management movement in Canada. So if you take our certificate, you automatically fulfill all the um, certification needs uh, to get your own BTM designation uh, because we're actually uh, accredited with this association. So I wanna show just a quick video about the excitement of such a program and the, and the need for a certificate. So I'm gonna stop sharing and then I'm gonna share again with This is where I always have trouble looking for my screen. Maybe I, what I'm going to do is going to end the slideshow. It's here, I believe. I always think. Not sure. What, do you see this? Do you see the video? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. This is what I do in my classes. It's, it's always like a 30 second delay for anything that I do. So I wouldn't really consider myself a techie person, but when I think about it, my day-to-day -day completely revolves around tech. What I love about technology is that it eliminates the barriers that we thought we had before and it kind of helps us live our lives more efficiently. It really is now the future. Everything that we do, everything that we live, everything that we're, 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 we're breathing is technology to some extent. There really is no such thing as a non-digital economy any longer. It truly is um, pervasive. And I think Canada is compelled to create business leaders who can slip seamlessly between business and technology. Business Technology Management is a program that was started in 2009. It's an industry-led initiative that was designed when organizations came to us and said they really need to develop 
people with skills that are rather unique, that combine outcomes in both business and technology. The BTM program is kind of best of both worlds. You learn the core business concepts along with IT concepts and you kind of mesh them together. Our students are receiving instruction in not only functional areas of the organization, but strategy as well. We run them through some fundamental and then advanced systems thinking and uh, computing science such as introduction to uh, information technology, database management, project management, coding, systems analysis and design. That capability is something that everybody, every industry, every company is looking for today. I see that value to the individuals who take it. I think they can make a real contribution and make a difference in the world. Since technology really is making its way into so many different new industries, what we're finding is that there's a lot of people that have conventional knowledge within those industries, but aren't yet able to complement that knowledge with a familiarity with technology. So having that hybridized skill set allows somebody to kind of bridge that gap and make the connection between a conventional business that knows how to describe their particular business needs and then the nuances that, that technology can have as well. The reason why graduates from the BTM program are important to the DMZ is because they're the ones allowing us to com continue thinking forward and really uh, pushing the limits of what we can uh, do. We have uh, placed students uh, from the program not only in traditional industries, but also into healthcare, into agriculture, and in positions that range from project analysts to digital marketing assistants. So it's, it's really a very, very broad uh, range of, of both positions and industries that we're placing our students in. Number one, phenomenal jobs probably a likelihood of getting a job much easier. Number two also, there's the opportunity of getting into different areas like sales and marketing, getting into areas like technology, consulting, and even startups. We currently have those programs uh, launched in 18 post-secondary institutions across Canada, and we have a number uh, that are in discussion and that we'll be adopting them soon. Yeah, so I'll stop. I think that's uh, enough to give you a flavor of what that is. So let me just switch back to the slide deck. Let's stop the share, reshare. No, I should launch uh, just one moment. Oops. Okay, you should see that same slide deck again. Okay, great. Yeah, I just want to, I like showing that little video, a, a snippet, but um, there's several BTM um, programs across Canada, different uh, uh, universities, and McMaster is one of those. And this certificate aligns with that uh, initiative. You can see that there's great industry support behind that initiative. There's jobs and there's a future. So that's another, you know, a pitch for taking the certificate. And so there's, oh, uh, two types of um, qualifications or requirements. So if you, it depends on when you started because we've been slowly modifying and tweaking the program. So if you started prior to 2019, this would be the, the um, requirements, you know, a, a blend of different required versus elective courses offered by our own commerce uh, program versus the ones offered in the faculty of engineering and software and technology division. Um, but we modify that to make it easier and, it, it, you know, in, in any student that's, oops, yeah, any student that's um, registered for the Commerce program, regardless if they started before 2019, can switch over to these new requirements. And they're actually, uh, it's a simplified list. Um, basically, you take all our eight or seven courses um, in, um, or 21 units of them in, in the Commerce program and just take two courses offered by software tech. And um, those are all online courses and they're off. We pick those ones because they're introductory and they're offered in every term. So you can take one of something in the fall, something in the winter, something in the spring. So this is much more operational and it's streamlined. So, so I'll leave it to that. And I'll pass it over to another uh, offering that um, the IS areas lead on is the SAP certification. So Miriam.
Yeah, uh, so Brian, before we going uh, like to this slide, there's a question. Can you go back please to the previous slide? So uh, like there's a question that as mentioned, we don't need core programming skill, but without knowing Python or other CS language or even knowing less about computers, can we learn about this program well? So uh, I think uh, you're asking about VTM certificate. And uh, as you see, uh, like uh, you are gonna take some courses. So uh, when you start, you don't need to know uh, like any program basics but if you want to take btm certificate so you're going to take some courses at dsp and as you see uh, like in this slide you're going to also take some courses in the, in the engineering department so for example about fundamentals of networking or the, some basics of programming Therefore, uh, like it, those of you that want to know more about the, uh, like to get your PTM certificate. So at the beginning, you don't need to know anything about programming, but you are gonna take some courses, uh, like in, uh, especially in the engineering department to know more about the basics of the programming. So uh, Brian, is there anything else that we need to add for Yeah, those courses that are listed there um, from the engineering department have been selected. They're beginner introductory courses. Though they do go at a quicker space because you're, you know, a lot of the other students will have they're engineering students, uh, but they assume you know no, no knowledge. And so, in other students, uh, we've selected these courses because students have, from commerce have already taken those courses and have passed them, so they're doable. So it's not like, um, but the, a lot of people that have taken them had had no background in computing. But you know, they may be a little challenging, um, mm -hmm. but it's very doable, and it's um, I think it's a good. Uh, good list. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of the students are actually taking this BTM certificate without having any background in uh, like knowing any programming languages. Uh, okay, so hopefully we answered your question. So uh, Brian, can you please go to the next slide? Yes. So another certificate that you may be willing to take is a safer uh, certificate that, uh, uh, so if you wanna take uh, this certificate, there are a few courses that uh, if you go to the website and we already add the link here, you see that on the, on the group uh, website, there are a list of the courses that you need to take just a few of them in order to be able to uh, actually uh, uh, like uh, take the SAP workshop and then take the SAP exam. So um, like, um, uh, like for example, uh, this year, uh, so uh, Brian, could you please uh, click on the first link? I don't know if it works or not, but- Okay, I'll try, yeah. I'll try. Yeah. <laughs> the second one works, but the first one, I tried it yesterday, it didn't work, but I can just explain it. Uh, Do you see so, it now? No? Uh, no, not this one, the first one, the second bullet, the second sentence. Yeah, what do you see? I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, let's see. But the whole idea is to take some course and SAP, maybe you think that what is SAP and what uh, what the course is all about. So it's all about integrating uh, business processes in the organization. So for example, uh, when you take this workshop and the courses that are related to uh, this specific certificate is all about uh, like um, the, the, the different business processes that we have in the organizations in different departments. So for example, you're gonna get uh, familiar with the uh, different business processes that we're going to have in marketing department, in accounting department, in finance, finance department, in OBHR department. And then, uh, and then you will understand that how organizations could better integrate their, uh, their, uh, their business processes. So uh, like Dr. Montazami, Ali Reza Montazami is uh, the one who teaches uh, the workshop for SAP. And usually the workshop is around April and May. So for example, this year it's going to start around April. Uh, it is about a April 28th until um, May 8th that the workshop is around uh, for 10 days that you're going to uh, take this workshop it is from the morning and from the until the evening and then you have to there's also a book that you have to read that to become more familiar with different uh, modules that you are going to have in SAP and then there are also some hands-on activity with SAP software and then you will be able to take that certificate this is really good especially for those of you that are very interested in uh, like them uh, to understand more about the different processes that is happening in the organizations 
And then uh, like um, the first link that you are gonna see sap.decrew.macmaster. So I just click on that, the link didn't work, but it usually works. So uh, so two days, of, uh, two days ago it worked, but yesterday it didn't work, but, but it's okay. So I think there's a problem with the website, but you, it should, when you click on that, it tells you the specific courses that you can take. So there are just a few courses that you can take. And then uh, the second link that I provided is that uh, for this year, uh, SAP certificate that if you are more interested to know more about uh, like the SAP certificate, the SAP workshop that is happening this year, you can just click on that link, go to that, there's an information. And uh, if you have any specific question, uh, like you, you need right. to email Dr. Uh, Ali Reza Montazem and he's gonna explain everything uh, for you in more detail. But, but this is amazing too. So it all depends what you wanna do in future, right? So this is another amazing opportunity that you can uh, yeah, that you can have at the group and uh, especially if you take some courses in information systems. Right. Thank you, Miriam. Uh, I know for sure they're updating this website. As you can see, this, this has last been updated since 2017. So Dr. Montezami and, and the, the, the web development crew at Commerce uh, or at DSB are updating this currently. So if exactly. you click those links, um, they'll, they'll provide you with more recent information about the workshop and just the, the, the courses. And they're actually doing an audit of the courses as well that are listed there to make sure that they have a sufficient um, amount of SAP instruction. Um, I, I assume eventually that the slide deck will be available with the webinar. So I'm not gonna go click these links either because it's so painful switching, <laughs> switching in Zoom. But these are just some great links, uh, just talking about uh, if you are interested in BTM, um, you know, the industry growth, the opportunities, why it's important. So I ask students who are interested in the certificate to explore this set of links. So I think that is us. We're, in the sake of time, I want to pass it over and give time to our two students who are join, joining us, uh, who are members of DISA. Um, it's a fun group. Um, I like to see the excitement about the student club um, and they hold events. We sponsor them every year uh, and they have a Facebook group. So I'll, I'll turn it over and I'll stop sharing my slides so that Crystal uh, uh, can start um, talking about DISA. All right. Thank you, Dr. Detler and Dr. Mario. Um, are you able to see my screen with the PowerPoint? Yes? Okay. All right. So I guess we will get started. So hi, everybody. My name is Crystal, and I was a graduate of the Honors Commerce Program at DeGroot, and I specialized in information systems. Um, so myself and Vim uh, will be sharing with you some information and insights about the DeGroot Information Systems Association, which is one of the many clubs that DeGroot has to offer for students like yourselves looking to explore an area of focus. Um, so first of all, I just wanted to say that you all made an excellent choice by considering to study at DeGroot because of its ranking among the top tier business schools in Canada and being globally recognized as a leader in community building and the management of digital innovation. I have been on DISA's executive team since 2017 as the Vice President of Logistics. And in 2019-2020, um, I took on the role as the President. I first joined this association because I saw it as an opportunity to grow professionally and personally, as well as step outside of my comfort zone. Um, learning about e-businesses and how business technologies are used in industry was something that fascinated me. And I saw this club as an opportunity to take an active role within the DeGroot community while also learning about the technology landscape. So the DeGroot Information Systems Association's mission revolves around the idea of providing educational opportunities for students beyond the classroom setting and striving to raise awareness about the field of information systems. With the goal of providing practical tools and personal and professional development opportunities, DISA provides knowledge about the field for all students through a variety of networking and speaker panel events, as well as different career development sessions and specific designation workshops. 
So let's take a look at some of the events we have posted, hosted in the past years. So one of our annual events includes a technovation in the workplace collaboration with the McMaster Engineering and Management Society, as well as the DeGroot Operations Association. This is an invaluable experience for students to network with industry professionals, gain valuable insights from panelists from uh, well-renowned companies such as Microsoft, Shopify, Bayless Medical Company, and Amazon, as well as connect with upper year students. We also host an interactive workshop led by a career coach named Luki Danu Carjanto, who is a career catalyst professor and business advisor. He provides career success coaching and supports strategic career navigation, job hunts, and enablement of career potential within the technology realm. Luki has over 12 years of experience in management consulting, and each year we are lucky to have him host his workshops with DISA. In addition to these events, DISA and Microsoft have also collaborated on a machine learning workshop where cloud experts from Microsoft walk students through a hands-on session of coding. So this is a great opportunity to supplement your learning in the classroom as well. Um, and machine learning is essentially a model that's used to analyze data and try to predict future results. Um, students are given challenges and are taught how to train these models and prizes are then awarded to winners who predict the best accuracy. Through all of the events DISA has hosted, we were recognized as Club of the Year in 2018 and 2019. Now I will pass it on to Vim, who is the current president of DISA to speak about this past school year. Thanks, Crystal. Um, just a little introduction on myself as well is that uh, I've been a general member of DISA since my first year of study. Um, I originally specialized in operations, but um, getting the chance to actually meet a lot of the guest speakers throughout the years, um, it actually pushed me towards pursuing my own, uh, the, the BTM certification through the program as well. And so currently I am a, a graduating student who is specializing in operations and information systems as well. Um, now for this year, um, it's, uh, it's included a drastic change involving the event formats, but we've had some very informative events throughout the year. Um, the first event that we had was the um, DSA Industries Collide event, and this featured guest speakers from um, Amazon, uh, St. Michael's, um, Tesla, as well as Apotex. And this was really to kind of push forward that narrative of the information systems being a very multidisciplinary um, field. And so we brought speakers in the areas of operations and supply chain to kind of explain their interaction with data reports and information systems and how they use those reports to um, create evidence-based decisions in um, their operations, as well as uh, we brought business anal analysts who are responsible for the uh, creation and design of these reports and who work with these different business users to um, really determine how they can create valuable reporting in their respective um, fields and uh, companies. Um, we also have had um, several different opportunities with DCS to um, do uh, Discord uh, chats, and that's been a great opportunity for us to actually speak one-on-one -on -one with some of our general members and interact with them as well as um, to even um, for, for incoming students and uh, those who are actually genuinely confused about the information systems field and really want to learn more about it. Um, we've had that great, um, um, our, our honorary member, yearly member, Luki Darikachanto come in as well and uh, do a more relevant conversation about uh, LinkedIn networking because that's something that we all should be leveraging now, especially with everything being online and all. Um, and it was also an opportunity for us to do break out into different rooms and have, a, have an interactive networking workshop in that event. Um, and actually coming up we on, in May 29th, we should be having our um, McMaster Engineering Management Society collaborative event, and that should be around the fields of tech consulting. So if you guys want to like understand more about what um, information systems is about, 
um, being a part of the club and attending some of our events are a great opportunity opportunity to do so. And um, in, in a later slide, you're probably going to be able to find some of our social media links, which uh, um, you can visit to actually learn more about um, upcoming events as well as information about the field itself. So thanks. Thank you. So I think it's time for questions and answers. So we did get a few questions answered throughout the webinar. So that's great. Um, one question that, that came in through to me was, would it be helpful to do a minor in computer science to go along with info systems? <laughs> well, it depends on what your, your career path is, what I would say. You know, if you want to be more technical and actually do software programming, it definitely you'd want to get more um, knowledge and instruction uh, and expertise in programming. So definitely, um, if that's your direction. So the IS uh, discipline is very broad. You can you know, go very technical, you can go managerial. Um, it's up to you. Uh, but our focus of our courses are definitely more managerial and strategic with a touch of technical. And then but if you want that more technical focus, like great, and then you would, would you know, go for that minor, get more experienced programming. Because I think employers would want to see that, you know, just what knowledge do you have? You don't have a computer science degree. Maybe you have some, a minor or another certificate. Maybe you did the SAP, you know, programming, just show evidence of, you know, knowledge gained. Perfect. And then kind of a very similar question, which you may have already kind of just answered, is are there any other minors that you think would be helpful to go along with IS? I'll turn that over to Miriam. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, so I think no, I think uh, like the computer science uh, like uh, would be an amazing. It's gonna be like if you combine it with information systems, a so minor in computer science and then major in information systems, uh, that would be amazing. It actually help you to, um, when you go to the job market to become much more successful because uh, when people go to the job market, uh, most of them only have the technical aspects, those that are graduated from computer science or, a lot of them have mainly managerial aspects. So if you can just uh, have the major information system and minor in computer science, then you are going to have both of them. Therefore, you are going to be much more successful compared to the other applicants. So I think the best will be minor. If you want to have a um, minor, the best will be in minor in computer. So this is my opinion. But uh, Brian, do you have any other opinion? I think these mm. two together would be amazing. Yeah, and again, if, if, if your focus is more technical, then do yeah. that. Uh, the next question is, what do you think the job outlook is like for IS? As, does the pandemic affect it at all? Oh, my goodness. Um, the <laughs> pandemic has actually elevated the, the need for technology and like, doing things online, working from home. Um, you know, e-retail e and e-shopping has just exponentially grown. Shopify is a good example of that. Very su successful Canadian business that has leveraged you know, the, the ability to deliver a platform that small, medium enterprises can use. So there's so much opportunity. And again, I, go, I would reference or, or suggest that the students go to those uh, links we provided in the slide deck to Tech Nation. They have tons of industry reports, you know, forecasts for job uh, projections and, and careers needed. Uh, and there's a, there's a demand, like there's a demand for people with this skill set. Exactly. And haven't seen any of my uh, RA students who have any problem of finding jobs. I actually am receiving a lot of emails from my students uh, that they are getting a lot of interviews from banks, from consulting companies. So, so maybe at the beginning of pandemic, everybody was just so, so scared of what's going to uh, happen. But right now, no, everything is just, uh, everything is amazing. And as Brian said, it's actually for information systems, it's all about technology, right? And the advancement of the technologies and the use of uh, technologies more and more in organizations. Therefore, actually companies are really, really want somebody who uh, who become um, uh, who has a skill in this uh, specific area? That's perfect. I've actually just did a reference for a student yesterday who is going into this type of role. So good timing. Uh, the next question is: Is this something you can do if you don't have a strong background in math or anything like that? Is it more qualitative or more quantitative? I, I would say it's uh, more qualitative. 
um, there's not a lot of math uh, needed. Uh, not, it's not like an operations management course or an economics course or a finance course where you have to do formulas and figure things out. Uh, it's more about um, you know, having the right business skills to apply technology, to beat out your competitors <clears throat> and think of all the risks and issues. And the, you know, so yeah, definitely more business skills as opposed to math skills. And even when you do programming, um, I have a background in computer science. I had my, that's my undergraduate degree. And it was not, had some math in it, but really it's just more logic. If you can think logically, you can program. You didn't need to be a math wizard to do it. Exactly. And then you're going to use those uh, like tools that help you to, the, the tools are going to do all the math things. It's you to, who needs to make decisions, who needs to interpret the results. So, uh, so therefore, as Brian says, more like a qualitative than quantitative. So you don't need to be really skillful in math, mathematics. So it's a use. That probably makes a lot of students feel a little more relaxed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the next question is, uh, Fairly specific. Um, okay, this is a bit long, so bear with me. Um, after checking, I find that we need six units from SFWR Tech Three CS. Are you able to open the Q and A? Maybe you can. Maybe you might understand this question a little the bit. Software better. tech. Yeah, those okay, are the no, software tech uh, courses offered by the Faculty of Engineering. There's about six of them, and you have to pick two. That makes more sense. I'm not familiar with that okay. one. Um, so before they take these courses, should they take computer sciences courses from computer sciences program to learn Python? No, um, they're, they're introductory courses and they're specifically selected because they're introductory, but they offer, you know, it's more technical than what we would offer. So to get our accreditation with the BTM movement in Canada, we had to show some evidence of technical skills in our courses and we lack them in our commerce program. So that's why the certificate combines commerce courses with software tech courses. And um, the ones we picked are introductory. Um, students have already taken it, who are commerce students have taken it and have, uh, have passed. Um, we used to have a longer list and some of them were too technical and they, there was problems. So that's why they're off. That's why we revised the requirements for after 2019. So. We, I think we got a, a nice um, finely tuned instrument there. It's doable. Um, yeah, that's This question actually came to me from an applicant and I think one of our students would probably be good to answer this. Um, if they decide to come to McMaster in the fall, will they be able to get involved with, uh, with IS right away? Is it easy to get involved in the club? Can they do things as a first year? This is probably more of a student question. Yeah, I'll jump on this and Crystal, please feel free to add on as well. Um, we actually have executive applications coming out. So, I mean, if you've signed up as a, uh, if you've already chosen your school, then I think it would be a good opportunity as well to apply to be a first year rep or um, even a executive member if you're, if you're qualified and you're interested in the field, right? Um, and um, as soon as um, the, as soon as like around March or May comes in, there should be a lot of um, intro events that DCS holds for um, incoming students. And it's a great opportunity for you to like start um, getting involved with the club and get your name kind of signed up into the membership list. Um, but um, the best way to honestly figure out um, what our key dates are and um, when, when is it the best time uh, to get involved is to again, follow our social media accounts, which are, which is, uh, probably the best opportunity. Yeah, Crystal, if you. Yeah, I think uh, Vim covered all of it, but um, just to emphasize what he was saying, uh, we do have executive applications coming out every year and throughout the year, if we do feel that the team um, is in need of a role, um, then we will open up applications throughout the year, depending on our needs. Um, and we do have a variety of roles as well. Um, so I do believe we have the president role. We have uh, the vice president of logistics role, um, vice president of marketing, and we also hire marketing associates as well, alongside um, technology associate roles as well. So students are also able to get involved with hosting these workshops as well. Um, and these workshops, 
um, are also very introductory level. So um, you shouldn't feel intimidated to attend these or even host one. Um, so I encourage you all to get involved and be a part of the, the group community. Yeah, and I would add to that, that you know, having those titles on your CV, your resume, when you go for the job market, it separates or differentiates you from your competitors. So just showing an interest in being involved is like, it's wonderful. So this is why these clubs are, are great. And I really um, advocate that students join these things. Great, thank you. Hopefully that helped that student and we'll see them in September joining the club. Um, the next question is, is information systems a good option for someone looking to start their own business in the future? I'll, 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 I'll start the conversation. Well, of course I'm biased, I, I think it is, uh, especially the course that I teach, 4KH3, which is a, a e-business plan course. So it's, it's all about, it's more of an entrepreneurial course and the heavy use on the startups of an, of an business that leverages technology. Uh, so definitely that would be a good course to take. Uh, any strong background in IS is great, but you know, if you're starting your own business, you also need you know, finance skills and accounting skills and um, there's so much. So it's kind of a, a broad question, but I, I can't see anyone going wrong having a strong IS background. Yeah, and in any firm, if you see now, like uh, like the major, uh, the uh, like the technology is something really, really important, and it doesn't matter what kind of kind of firm and a startup you are gonna have in the future. But you see that the technology is, technology is growing so fast, and then I think you are gonna need to have some kind of skills to understand the technology. So, for example, to understand what is a database, what how you can analyze your data in the company. So um, how you can manage the project that you're going to have in the company. Therefore, I think uh, like information systems and if focusing on information systems will help you a lot to become a more successful when you're going to have your own company. And then you don't need to worry about the other fields because in the, your first two years, especially in the first two years, you're going to also understand about the other fields as well to make sure you are, you're going to also have these skills regarding to those fields. Okay. Anecdotally, a friend of my brother's just started his own business and his background is in IS. So like you said, he's taking courses from other areas. Uh, he's in England and he's just launched his own business. This is what his background been. So yeah. good, good timing. Uh, yeah. yeah. So um, I, I definitely agree that startup culture and um, innovation goes hand in hand with information systems, especially since you're seeing that all of um, these new technologies are being immersed into basically any department in, um, in the startups. And um, one thing to point out is that uh, McMaster also has um, an organization called the Forge Startup School. So um, you are also able to um, pitch your business idea as well as win funding for your startup. Um, I was actually a candidate at the Forge Startup School a couple of years ago. So um, it's definitely a good, a good experience. Um, and going back to the minor question, um, McMaster does offer a minor in innovation as well in collaboration with the Faculty of Engineering. So I think that those two are definitely um, parallels in terms of supplementing your learning and enhancing the um, practical aspect of your learning experience. That's great advice. I know the minor in innovation has become really popular. So thank you for mentioning that. Um, I think we have time for one final question. So this question is, how are the comp side courses for the BTM certificate expected to be done during online school? Are there challenges due to students not accessing the computer computer labs, the campus computer labs? And will students have to use their own laptops at home for learning basic CS skills? So I can actually say, we don't, we still don't know what the fall is gonna look like. We're obviously hoping to be as in-person as possible. Um, we obviously are trying as hard as we can to be back. We're hoping to make an announcement in the next month or so, but we are hoping to be in-person as soon as we can. So hopefully this is something that isn't gonna be something we're still gonna be having to deal with working from home in a year from now or two years from now. I'll let you add yeah. anything else. Yeah, I just know for sure all those software tech courses are online they've been online for years so that you can do them from home uh, working off a cloud the, the software is there that you can use so uh, that's that will forever be online those courses 
our own commerce course is a different animal. Hopefully we'll be back in person. Um, so hopefully this isn't something that you're gonna have to be thinking about long-term. Uh, so hopefully in the next few months, we will be able to start, start getting back to campus at least part-time and everyone can start getting back to normal. Uh, so I think we're, I think that's about all the time that we have today, but if anyone does have any other questions, please feel, please feel free to email us at buzzcom or put your questions into discord. You can also email our club. They would definitely love to talk to you. You can either sign up to join or ask any other questions. And feel free to go back and watch this webinar again. It's going to be posted on YouTube in the next few weeks. But definitely reach out if you have any questions. And I hope the area of focus webinars have helped you. And hopefully a lot of you are going to be signing up for their classes in the next few months. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.